Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second uh, iteration of the um, Axiom webinars, of the Axiom seminars, um, to learn programming from scratch uh, for absolute beginners. Um, so, uh, as always, at first, um, uh, for those who are watching online or for those who uh, here are for the first time, I'd like to introduce myself and uh, say a little bit about the school and a little bit about those seminars that we are doing. So uh, my name is Anatoly and I have been uh, developing software in the software industry for the past nine years. Uh, primarily, I have been working with the Scala programming language. And currently, I am at the core team that develops this programming language at um, Swiss uh, Polytechnic University in the city of Lausanne. Uh, personally, I do not have as a formal computer science background. I started um, as a law student in Ukraine, and I started doing programming as a hobby, which later became my passion and later later became um, my primary primary occupation. Uh, so, since I have been working for the past three years in the university that uh, develops the Scala programming language, I got some experience experience in teaching and um, discovered my passion to teaching and um, that's that's how I got the idea to start this school to educate people who are completely new to programming on how to um, how to get started with this language uh, so a little bit uh, about the axiom programming school um, so it is a school oriented for complete newcomers so people who do not have any formal um, training or informal exposure to programming. Uh, and uh, this is a school that is oriented to teaching you programming by exposing you to concepts first. Uh, so the idea of the school is that um, programming is not about how many programming languages you know, it is about the concepts you know. Concepts such as what is a variable, what is a loop, uh, what is a program, uh, things like that. So the idea is that um, concepts usually repeat from programming language to programming language. And if you, for example, know the concepts in one programming language, it is uh, fairly easy to switch to another programming language that uses the same concepts. And this is why in the Axiom school I'm teaching Scala, because uh, um, even though Scala may be not as popular as, as Python, for example, it incorporates uh, many more concepts than Python, than Java, than many other programming languages. So if you know Scala, it is fairly easy to switch to Python or Java or any other language of your choice. Uh, but the reverse is not true. So if you know Python, it's not as easy to switch to Scala. Uh, the education style that uh, we are doing in the Axiom School is uh, mostly oriented on the personal individual work. So there is a textbook uh, that uh, you all have links to at the Discord. And um, the textbook is a work in progress. And uh, the idea is that you do the homeworks uh, of the textbook and you uh, read the chapters of the textbook to expose yourself uh, more and more to various concepts of the Scala programming language. The seminars that we are doing here, they are going to be covering some materials from the book, but still it is important for you to do the self-paced learning and self-paced uh, education. So do not treat those seminars as some kind of course where you need to attend every lecture for a set uh, period of time. Um, those seminars are just to explain you the concepts, um, the concepts from the book, just to reinforce them. Uh, so uh, moving on to the seminar, again, the format of the seminar is um, as follows. Uh, so we are going to um, cover, after this short introduction, we are going to cover one topic from the book. And in our case, it will be uh, the uh, uh, first um, program in Scala. We're going to learn how to write the first program in Scala. Uh, and, um, that, that we are going to do for the first 20 minutes and uh, afterwards afterwards you will be able to ask your um, to ask any questions that you like in the in zoom using mic by raising your hand 
So 20 minutes, we are going to cover a concept and for half an hour, then we'll be able to discuss any concepts, any questions that you might have. You may also ask questions during the presentation uh, by uh, typing in the chat. So during the presentation, the communication is happening uh, at the chat or I'll explicitly ask you to unmute yourself to talk if you if there are any questions, if you would like to answer any question. Uh, so uh, that is the introduction that I wanted to make. And uh, if um, you do not have uh, any questions about this part, then we can move to the um, to the today's topic of the today's seminar. And this is the first program in Scala. Uh, so on the previous seminar, on the previous seminar, we have covered the first chapter of the book and uh, the, uh, what we covered was the data and logic, which are two fundamental concepts that make up all of the programming experience. So everything that you see in programming can be understood in terms of either data or logic. So that was pretty theoretical part. And uh, now we are going to dive a little bit into the uh, details of how you can actually write your first Scala program. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so can you guys see my screen? Please write in the chat if you are able to do so. Okay, we have we have yes from you. So um, I have here the book open, and uh, to there is there is a section, there is a header on top of every chapter of the book uh, with uh, some links, and one of those links is write code. And if you click that link, you are going to end up on the website uh, called Scasty. So what exactly is that? Why do we care about it? So um, every programming language, um, it uh, has um, uh, to write a program in any programming language, you need a so-called code editor. And a code editor is a place where you write your code and where you run the code and where you can experiment with that code. Um, usually, there is a, it is a case that for any given programming language, you have access to a number of code editors, and some of them are easier to set up, and some of them are harder to set up. Uh, for Scala, it is also the case. And so for the purposes of this course, I picked up the easiest to set up as a code editor, which is Scasti, which is a, an online code editor, which you do not need to set up at all, because it is a website. So you can access it uh, from for instance, from the book. And the only setup that you need to take care of before writing code is uh, this worksheet button over here. So make sure it is green. So the reason it must be green is because um, this particular editor supports uh, two modes of um, working with Scala. One is uh, the standard mode, and another one is a so-called worksheet mode, which is a simplified mode. So the idea is that um, with the worksheet mode, you need you can write the code without um, doing any any setup that is necessary when writing the ordinary Scala code. So it is easier for our purposes. So please uh, ensure that the worksheet button is checked is green before um, before uh, trying to write any code. Uh, so next, uh, what does this editor consist of? So first of all, we have at the top of the editor, we have the uh, bar with buttons. So there is the run buttons, the new buttons, the format button, etc. And those are buttons that control the execution of the program and um, you know, various other functions of the editor. Um, they, they are usually present in any code editor. Uh, below that, we have uh, two text areas. So one of them is uh, white, and you see the cursor blinking uh, on that uh, code area. And at the bottom, you see the black uh, text area, which uh, says console at the top right corner. And uh, at the 
a white te text area. It is a place where you can actually write the code. That's the place where the code is written. And the black code area, the black text area is called, is called the console. And the idea is that uh, in that black area, the computer talks back to you. So it comes back to you with the results of the execution of, the, of your program. So to demonstrate what um, I mean, let's write the first, our first program. And uh, in any programming language, a traditional first program is uh, a so-called hello world program, which is a program that makes the computer write hello world on screen. So in Scala, to do that, you first write print ln, and print ln stands for print line. And then you write a pair of parentheses. And in the pair of parentheses, you write a pair of quotes. And in between those pair of quotes, you write the text that you want the computer to print. In our case, it is hello world. So next, to make it run, you either click the run button or you hit a shortcut to run it. On Windows, it is control enter and on Mac, it is command enter. So I'll hit the shortcut. And you saw for a moment on the console, there was some uh, text running that indicated that the program was executing and it is some technical details that you don't need to care about. And you see the text hello world actually printed in the console. Another thing that you might have noticed is that in the code area, there is uh, this uh, weird uh, pair of parentheses and uh, scala.unit appearing here. So for the moment, you do not need to worry about this output. It is, um, it is specific to the worksheet mode that we are working on, but um, this is not something you normally see in uh, normal Scala when working with Scala. And for our purposes, it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever that it is here. Uh, so please ignore it. It's uh, not part of the code. It's just uh, some technical details that the worksheet prints. We will cover in the subsequent uh, chapters in the subsequent seminars how this might be of, uh, of value. OK, so print line, hello world. Are there any questions about, um, about uh, what we covered so far? If there are any questions, please write them in the chat and I'll answer them. And otherwise, uh, I'll show um, just to make the concept uh, clear. It's not only hello world that you can make the computer type, but you can, for instance, type another text like I'm learning Scala. And the uh, console will write I'm learning Scala. You can write several of such statements, one under another. So print line. You write another piece of code uh, under the first one, another instruction to write as a text on the screen, and it will print two lines instead of one, and so on. You can have an arbitrary number of those, of those uh, print statements. Uh, so uh, John is asking in uh, the chat uh, a very good question that uh, is the code code sensitive, case sensitive, sorry, or case insens insensitive, and uh, are, do the white spaces matter a lot? So yes, the code is uh, case sensitive. So this means that if you write a print line from the capital letter, for example, it will not mean the same thing and it will be an error. So if you execute this code, you will see an error, which says not found print line, which means that you made a typo and you need to correct it. So print line. White spaces wise for our purposes here so far, uh, they do not matter. So it means that you can put some white spaces after print line and it still works. You can put some white spaces here, it still works. Uh, but uh, Later on, we will see some uh, concepts in the subsequent ch chapters where white spaces do matter. So it is a good uh, idea to um, follow some conventions when working with uh, Scala. And the convention when working with Scala, it is something that um, all the programmers who write Scala follow. It is uh, not to write the uh, white space after the name of uh, 
the logic that we are trying to run, in this case, print line, and the data that it runs on. So speaking of logic and data, um, they require, yes, um, so uh, there is in, in chat, uh, Mehdi is asking a very good question. What is print line, an instruction, a method, a function? So it, it is a very good question because we need to cover um, what exactly are those print line, what is the meaning of the parentheses, what is the meaning of quotes, etc. So in the previous um, lecture, in the previous seminar, we covered that all of the programming can be viewed in terms of either logic or data. So anything that you can see in programming is either logic or data. And the logic is um, the instruction for the computer to do something. And the data is the information that the computer operates on. The data can be text, for example, or images. And so if you go, for example, to Facebook, the data will be the text of a post on your uh, wall or a picture that somebody posted or a movie, a video, uh, stuff like that. In our case, I am learning Scala is a piece of text and it is uh, classified as data. And print line is a command to the computer to type this data on screen. So you see this data has appeared in the console. So this means that the computer received the command to uh, type it on the console. So this is classified as logic. Now in Scala, uh, many, in many instances, in many, in many cases, uh, in most of the cases, I would even say, uh, the logic that you see will be a method, a so-called method. So method is um, a special kind of logic in Scala that you will frequently encounter uh, that encapsulates some kind of operation, some kind of command for the computer to do. Now, there are other types of logic that um, you can encounter in Scala. But the most frequent one, the most uh, the one that you will be working the most frequently with, is a method, and um, so print line is a method. And uh, the format that the method is written in is called is uh, well you see it on the screen. So first you write the name of the method. In our case, it is print line. Uh, then you write a pair of uh, parentheses. And between those parentheses, you write the data that the method operates with. Now, it is this is an important point. What I have just said, the data that the method operates in, because it turns out that uh, in most cases, logic it actually works on some data. Uh, so, if you are talking about the logic of printing text on screen, the question immediately arises: What exactly text is getting printed on screen? So it's, meaning, it's meaningless to say to the computer, print something on the screen if you do not specify what exactly to print. And this is the case for most of the logics that you will encounter. Intuitively, for example, if, you, if we come back to the Facebook example, to the example of a social network, whenever you want to post something on, on the wall, to comment on something, it is a logic, right? But you need to specify the text that you actually want to post, and this is data. So logic is very often meaningless without data. So in Scala, the method name is followed by a pair of parentheses and the data that it works on. So I hope that uh, it's clear so far. If you have any more questions, then please post them in the chat. And um, if uh, that is clear so far, we can, I think, move to the next chapter. Today, we are going to cover two chapters of the book. And the next chapter is uh, dedicated to variables. And by the way, before we move to the next chapter, I would like to clarify the terminology a little bit uh, of, the, of this entire method and uh, uh, logic that it works and the data that it works on. So here on the screen you see a picture from the book um, that um, gives formal names, formal, formal terminology to what we just covered. So the method is an instruction to computer to do something and the data that it, wor that it works on is called the parameter. 
So whichever data you're passing to a method to work on uh, is called a parameter. Mehdi is asking a question in chat. Will you talk about the homework in class? Uh, yes, we are going to cover the homework in uh, class uh, today. We are going to cover the homework from the vacation planner, though, because the homework for the first chapter it is uh, it was to write a program that outputs a recipe for your favorite dish, and uh, we have already given answer to that homework in uh, so far because uh, we have written here two statements and those two statements can be can output um, you can change them easily to output the recipe for your favorite dish so we're not going to stop on this uh, uh, longer unless somebody feels the need to do it uh, otherwise we can move to the next chapter that introduces the vacation planner as a concept of the variables on the example of vacation planner. So um, the question is outputting outputting text on screen is uh, nice as a first program, but it is not very useful. And the question arises uh, what is an immediate useful application that you can use Scala for? And it turns out that the first immediate scene that you can use Scala for is uh, treated as a glorified calculator. And a glorified calcula calculator, it means that uh, it can compute some numbers for you. You can use it as a calculator. So uh, the way we are going to use it is uh, as follows. So first of all, we are going to clean the um, code area to write the new code. and uh, Next, uh, for instance, uh, we can ask Scala what is two plus two. And uh, to do that properly, we also want to print the value of that two plus two, like how much is two plus two on screen. So we do not just write two plus two, we write the instruction for the computer to write something on screen, we write print, print line, and then we write two plus two, and we run this code, and on, on the console area, you see four. Now, so there are a few things that we need to um, cover here, how it exactly works. So first thing that we need to cover is uh, why exactly do, do we not have the quotes anymore? So because it's not intuitive why like in the hello world example, we had the quotes like this. And uh, in this two plus two example, we do not have the quotes like this. So what, what exactly is the meaning of quotes and uh, uh, what to do with them? And further, we can write, we can just write print two on screen with quotes or without quotes like this. So we can write print line two, it will output two. We can write it with quotes. It will also output two, and this will this outputs the same thing. So print line two and print line print line quotes two outputs the same thing. So uh, does anyone have any idea why exactly this happens? Any suggestions? Maybe somebody, yeah. Uh, so. John writes in chat, the code is for the string. Without the code, it means a uh, logic. So it's uh, not exactly that. Any other ideas? Because uh, why not exactly that? Because two is still a data. Two is still a piece of data. It's a number, so it's, it's not a piece of logic. So a mathematical operation can also be understood as a kind of data. Well, so uh, yeah, so the question was uh, the question was 
what is the difference between two in quotes and two without quotes. So two versus two. So what is the difference? If you print um, two in quotes and two without quotes, it uh, outputs the same thing, it outputs two. So the idea is, uh, yeah, uh, Stanislav writes in chat different data types, and this is exactly right. So the, so first of all, let's clarify the confusion between the uh, logic and the string, because it seems that there are a number of, of, of uh, suggestions in chat that one is logic and another one is string. So it seems that many people think that this one is uh, uh, data, which is a string. And many people think that uh, this thing two without quotes is uh, still a, is a logic. So in that case, I would like to ask you what kind of logic this is if it is without quotes. Because logic is a command for the computer to do something. So if you think it is a logic, uh, my follow-up question would be what exactly is this two over here? What does it do? Uh, what does it tell the computer to do? Uh, I'm not talking about two plus two. I'm talking about just the number two. Like, uh, what does it do? If it is a logic. It doesn't print the number two because uh, what prints the number two is So uh, print print line is the instruction that prints something. The number two by itself doesn't print anything in the console area. So the idea is that uh, um, both uh, the, the idea is that yes, uh, two represents the integer two. John says in chat, and this is exactly right. But the integer two is not a logic; it is a data. So just to recap, logic is an instruction, a command for the computer to do something. And the data is information such as text, numbers, can be pictures, can be videos, etc., etc., etc. And um, by itself, data is passive, data is static, data doesn't do anything. So the text, such as, for instance, um, Facebook post, it will not post itself unless you click the post button. Uh, and the numbers, they will not add themselves unless you specify that you want to add them. And the pictures, they will not, uh, they will not uh, be, again, posted or sent somewhere unless you send them. And the videos will not play unless you give the instruction for them to play. So data by itself is passive. It doesn't do anything. Uh, the analogy for the data is, uh, is like a book. A book by itself doesn't change, it's just lines there, and what is written in the book, it doesn't do anything, it's just there, it's just static. And the logic is uh, the instructions that the computer does on this something. So the instruction can be add numbers. So all those mathematical operations, Post to Facebook, play video, etc., etc., etc. So um, the logic are the operations that are performed over data. So uh, by this logic, by this view of things, the row number two it doesn't perform anything. It it is not a command for the computer to do something. 
and uh, what uh, the logic that can be done on it. So, so the number two is data. And there are a number of operations of logic that you can do with that data. So, so um, can anyone give me in the chat some examples of uh, what can you do with the number two? Also, if you want to speak, you can raise your hand using the Zoom function, and you can you can say using mic what you can do with the number two. So, any ideas, anyone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So the suggestions are you can turn it upside down visually. And this is absolutely a valid idea, basically. Um, two plus two. So add another number to it, multiply it. Uh, all of this is valid logic on it. So turn upside down, add. Multiply. Uh, another idea that I'll say is uh, print it on square, screen. Print it on screen. So all of these are valid operations that you can do on two. Now, and uh, yeah, in case you're wondering about uh, turning upside down the number two, it's uh, it it can be done by converting the number two into image first and then flipping that image upside down, so perfectly possible. Now, uh, coming back to the question of the difference between the two in quotes and two without quotes, does anyone have an idea what kind of difference? So two versus uh, two without quotes. Does anyone have any idea? Maybe somebody wants to take the mic and speak about it, speak their ideas. If, if so, please raise your hand. Yes, so two is a string and well, two, two in quotes is a string and two is an integer. Uh, John is right in chat. So uh, now the question is, why exactly does that matter? Uh, why does it matter to uh, tell Scala that something is a string or an integer? Because I might make a case that like going back to our example. So we have here, print line two with quotes and print line two without quotes. And then we look at the console and the output is uh, identical. So why do we care about writing two in quotes or two outside the quotes? Why, why do we care to precisely specify the data type, the data type of the data we're working on with? Well, why should we care in programming if anything is a number or if anything is a string? The memory space required, uh, that's right, but uh, and there is something even more uh, important because I mean, with modern computers, usually memory space is not of a concern, but something, yes, exactly. Olga is absolutely right to operate with it. So if you go back uh, to the whiteboard, we have, uh, we have, just covered that there is some logic possible on the number two. 
as an integer. I'll move it here a little bit and clarify that too. So on the so logic possible on two as an integer is uh, adding multiplication and printing, and uh, then the logic possible on two as a string. Would be a little bit different. So, uh, can anyone name me the logic that is possible on a string, which uh, is not, uh, which may not be possible on a number? And by the way, just not to confuse you, turning upside down would be, if you if you are very precise, it will be possible on two if two is a picture and not an integer. So, turning upside down is. Uh, not a valid operation for an integer. It's not a valid thing you can do with an integer, but if two is a picture, it is a valid logic. So Stanislav says uh, cropping, which is right. So it means if you have a text, you can take a piece of the text. John says uh, concatenation. It means that if you have, um, uh, if you have Two strings, you can add them together. Uh, well, add them together in the sense you can write uh, another one string after another string. So string, by the way, is the Scala way of saying text for those not familiar. So uh, Mehdi asks, what is concat? So concat is uh, means writing one string after the other string. So if you have two strings like str1 and str2, in the quotes, then if you concat them, it will yield str1, str2. So it will turn them into, into one string, one after another. Now, uh, yes, uh, um, John says, can you also get uh, the second letter of a string, for example? Yes, it's also absolutely possible, valid operation on, on a string. So. substring so that's called substring so um, and with numbers we usually do not say that you have for example a number 1000 and we take like the second character of that number we usually do not say that with numbers so uh, that's that's answer like why we write why we care about the data types uh, because we can do different things with different data types now, moving back to our example, uh, it may not matter now that we write uh, two in quotes as a string and two without quotes as a number. Uh, to, mm, it may not matter now because it's, uh, we can do, it happens that we are performing the operations that is uh, valid on numbers and on uh, strings because you can print on screen a number and you can print on screen a string. But let's see what happens if we try adding two strings and two numbers. So any idea, any idea of what the result of the execution here will be? So can you write in chat what you think will happen if we run the following program? Uh, yes, John is right. So the first one will output 22. Uh, and the second one is output 4, because uh, the operation of uh, plus the logic of adding two strings and the logic of adding two numbers are different for numbers and for strings. And for instance, uh, some logic will not be possible on numbers, some logic will not be possible on strings. Uh, so you need to get the data type right. Uh, so, okay, so that was the uh, that was the data types, and just to make the, make sure you understood the material, what will happen if we write the if we write the code as follows? Please write your options in chat. What will it output? Yep, 
well, guys, right? So it will be two plus two because this is a piece of text. So, all right, that was, uh, that was why exactly we should care about the quotes and why exactly quotes are important. Now back to our glorified calculator. So you can, uh, you see that you can write two plus two here in the print line. And if you run it, it will say four. And now the question is, uh, where does this two plus two stand when it comes to uh, when it comes to our classification of data and logic? So, uh, how should we exactly treat two plus two? So, let's um, let's see how it ties into our pictures that we have previously painted because uh, a little bit earlier we saw that uh, there is. Um, uh, like how how do you call a method? Well, by the way, this thing that we wrote just now it um, it is technically called a method call. So if you have a method and you want to tell the computer to run this uh, the logic that is represented by this method, it is technically called a method call. And we have seen the structure of the method call. So first you write the name of the method, and then you write the parentheses, and in that parentheses you write the data that you want to print. But two plus two is not only data, it is also logic, right? So two is data and another two is data, but plus it is an instruction for the computer to add two numbers. So if it, so it is a logic. And the question is uh, what the computer does in this situation. So the idea is that the computer here in between the parentheses, it expects uh, some uh, data, but it encounters some logic. And um, it's not only logic, it's a, technically it is a mix of data and logic. And um, whenever this situation happens, we say that this mix of data and logic that was provided in the place where data was expected, it is called technically an expression. And what the computer does when it encounters the expression where the data was expected, it evaluates that expression. So it runs the logic and reduces uh, logic and data mix uh, to become raw data. Now two plus two is an expression and uh, it reduces to four because well four tells uh, uh, plus tells us to add two numbers and it becomes four. Uh, you can run all sorts of mathematical expressions between those brackets. So two plus two times four, for instance. Uh, it will evaluate to 10 because uh, 2 times 4 is 8 and plus 2 becomes 10. And we can put the brackets here and they'll be interpreted in the mathematical sense of brackets. So 2 plus 2 is 4 and 4 times 4 is 16. So you can use it as a calculator. Um, now, another valuable concept that we are going to cover today is the concept of a variable. Because if you saw in the book, we are uh, trying to use this calculator, uh, well, Scala as a calculator to calculate the, uh, the trip cost. So in our example that is covered in the book, we have, we have what? We have um, the trip from, uh, for instance, from, To Barcelona, from Helsinki to Barcelona, a trip, and we want to ask what is the cost of that trip, and the cost is composed of uh, flights, and the flights will say be two hundred dollars, and uh, the hotel. The hotel will be like $50, for instance. And the hotel you pay every single day. So you need to know how long you stay. So you stay there for, for instance, four days. And to compute the entire cost of vacation, it will be the cost of the flights, which is 200 plus the cost of the hotel, which is 50, multiplied by the number of days you stay there, which is four. And you can ask Scala to do it. OK. 
Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, so we can also include the cost of daily living, but for our purposes, we won't do it just to keep things simple. The idea is that we can ask Scala to say 200 plus 50 times four, and it will tell you how much it will be. But the problem is here with uh, this approach is that um, you will come back later and you will you may you might very well forget uh, what is the meaning of each number. Like for instance, I said here 50 times four. Like you might remember that four standard for the for the number of days you stay there, but what is 50? Um, it can be the cost of the hotel, but as John wrote in chat, it can be also the cost of daily living. So what exactly is that? You might forget it. And in these situations, it is useful to give names to your data that you're working with. Because as you have seen in our whiteboard, in our whiteboard, you see that uh, every expense, we named it before we calculated on it. So flights was named. We say that flights cost 200. We, we do not just write 200. We say it's named. The hotel, the same thing. The stay, the same thing. And uh, in, in this situation, when it is on paper, it's not possible to confuse already that 50 is a cost of daily living. Now, it is possible to do the same thing in Scala, to name the data in Scala. And uh, to do that, you use the concept of a variable. So pretty much the same way we wrote every expense before calculating on it, we can do. We can write this. We can write the expenses the same way in Scala. Um, so what are variables? You write them as follows. You write first of all. You write well, which is a keyword in Scala. It is a part of the language which says whatever comes after well is a variable. Then you say the name of the variable, which is like lights. You say 200. You say well another time, and you say uh, hotel per day, which is 15. And then you say well stay duration, which is four. And then you can use those um, named. Uh, this named data because this is what variables are it is named data um, you can use it in the program so for instance instead of writing 200 here in the print line you can say flights and uh, Scala will know that uh, flights is um, data that you named and the value of it is 200 so if you rerun the program it will still be 400 then you can substitute the other row numbers, uh, you can replace them with uh, the variables having that value. And this calculation is much more readable because you know you know the meaning of um, the meaning of the data you're working with. You know that uh, the first argument to plus is the price of flights. The second one is the hotel price, and then there is the stay duration price. So that is the idea of a variable. And now uh, we actually overrun our 20 minute time to present all the concepts. I spent like 40 minutes presenting that first two chapters, but we still have a little bit of time left to for some questions and also to address the homework question. So maybe it would be a good idea to discuss the homework a little bit. So first of all, does anyone have any questions about we, what we covered so far? And maybe also about the homework, any difficulties, any anything you are struggling with? If you want, you can also raise your hand in Zoom to speak about it. So since there are no questions, maybe we can address this. Uh, uh, OK, uh, Mehdi asks uh, the favorite recipe. So the favorite recipe was uh, homework from the first chapter. Um, 
And uh, can you please elaborate what was problematic about it? What question would you like to ask? Well, in theory, you can write it, yes, you can write it with the string concat, but it is uh, more difficult to write it with the string concat because uh, the question arises, how do you write, uh, how do you make new lines with the string concat, right? So for instance, if you write it uh, like, um, Okay, uh, uh, can you can you please send the link to your code uh, so that we have it? You can you can send the link in chat. But the idea was uh, the idea of this uh, task was uh, that for writing a recipe you need um, usually not one line you need several lines. Um, so um, you write the code on several lines, you use several print line statements. So uh, the solution could be something like this. So you write first, um, like, I don't know, fried fish is the name of the recipe that you're uh, working with. And then you, from the new line, you write the first ingredient. Fry a fish, for example. From the next line, you write another ingredient, like add my nest. And by the way, <laughs> that's not the real recipe, obviously. If you run it, it's going to print it on screen. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at uh, what Mehdi sent, sent us. Uh, oh, yeah, so this is no longer the uh, recipe scene. That's uh, another task that is from the second chapter. And it is uh, BMI calculator. So BMI calculator was, uh, as the idea was to uh, write a calculator similarly to the vacation calculator, but for body mass index. And for those of you who don't know, body mass index is a numeric uh, formula to um, that uh, indicates um, the, that relates mass to the height of a person and uh, and uh, uses a single number to describe how uh, the ratio between mass and the height of the person. Uh, so uh, uh, yes, uh, Maddy, it's uh, it's right what you wrote here. The only thing is uh, that you might want to put a white space between the equal sign and the m of the mass because uh, i mean it works it works even without the white space but the convention in the scala world is to write the white space around the equal sign of a variable and uh, if you follow conventions it's uh, usually better for you because other programmers are mm, are going to have a better time reading your code and in some cases you're going to even avoid errors if you follow conventions, because sometimes white spaces do matter in Scala. And now there is uh, also a white space between print line and uh, brace. So this uh, can be avoided, right? In a white space here, because it's also a convention. Again, it works like this, it is a correct solution, but it's better to follow the conventions uh, to avoid possible errors in the future, because sometimes the white space does matter. Okay, uh, so uh, Bonnie asks, uh, is it possible to add pictures on it? Uh, I'm not sure what exactly you mean by that, but if you say that, um, if what you mean is, uh, is it possible to uh, print pictures on the screen in SkateT, then the answer is no, because SkateT is a very simple code editor. It's not designed to work with pictures, it's designed to do some, to get started with Scala very quickly. But 
in Scala in general, it's more than possible to work with pictures. So it's perfectly possible to write something like a social network, like an Instagram clone, for example, that is going to work with pictures. Uh, John asks uh, the BMI, how do you ask the user of the program to input a value? Is it like this? So John writes uh, uh, the read line function. And uh, yes, you're exactly right. Um, in Scala, this is how you normally ask a person for the input. And um, however, in the context of scarcity, it doesn't really make sense because scarcity is an interactive editor, right? So um, it's supposed to be, um, so in, so in SCASTI, the programmer is the user of the program because you write the program and then you immediately see the output. For usual programs, it's not the case. The programmer is one person, the user is another person, and you normally do not see the code of the program you run. So for instance, for a, for a social network, when you do not see the code that the, uh, when you do not allow the person to work with the code, the user to work with the code, you need to care about things like uh, asking them for inputs. But um, in our case, for case day, you do not need to care about it. So if you want to change the values, if you want to calculate the different BMI for a different person, what you do is you just modify the variables here. Um, this makes sense for scarcity, and this is done this way just to simplify the learning experience, to introduce one concept at a time. For a normal program, this is not a suggested practice. For the normal prog program, you would use some kind of uh, way to ask a person for input like john posted in chat but for the learning purposes uh, if you're treating scala as a glorified calculator which we are doing right now the modifying the variables directly is enough so uh, moving on to the homework again uh, i see nobody is bringing up the third question the hard one so um, did you guys manage to solve it uh, please write plus in chat if you were able to solve it and write minus in chat if you were not able to solve it so that i see And among those of you who did manage to solve it, does anyone want to <laughs> Bonnie says plus and minus <laughs> at the same time? So, uh, okay, among uh, those of you who did solve it, does anyone want to uh, maybe explain to us what was your thinking process on how you uh, on uh, how you managed to solve it? If you want to explain to us, you can raise your hand. Uh, using Zoom's raise hand button, and then I'll unmute you. You'll be able to talk us through it. Otherwise, I can do it. <laughs> Joan says we're shy. <laughs> well, okay, so. Then I can guide you through at least my thinking process on uh, how to solve this kind of problems. So, the question was uh, so, first of all, uh, I'll remind you about the problem. So, the problem was uh, yeah, let's, let's go back to the code. And uh, just recap the problem a little bit again. So uh, the idea is that, uh, like we have just covered the idea of the variables, right? So uh, we had uh, 
we had seen that it was possible to calculate, like for instance, the cost of uh, avocation. Let me just copy and paste it real quick. So that so here is um, uh, here is us using variables to calculate the trip from Helsinki to to Barcelona using the flight, the desired stay of, um, stay duration, the hotel cost, and the cost of living per day, and all of that is stored in the total variable. So, uh, and then this total variable is getting printed on screen. And then the idea was that we do not want just this six, 640 output, just raw number. What we want is some kind of nice, uh, nice um, string before it, nice text before it. Like for instance, the total stay is blah, blah, blah. So one way to do it is of course, string concatenation. So like this. And, uh, but another more elegant way is, uh, it turns out that it is possible to write variables in text in Scala to use variables in text itself. If I do it like this, it doesn't work. It says uh, a total stay and then it says total. It doesn't work like this, but it turns out that it is possible to make it work like this because why? Because it is uh, a very common task the need to use variables in strings. So in Scala, there is a built-in way to do it. And the way to do it is you put S before the string. And uh, by putting S before the string, you essentially tell Scala, okay, in this string, I am going to use variables. So that Scala knows. If you do not put S here, Scala doesn't know that you're going to use variables in the string and uh, it will not work. If I run this program, it still doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because uh, even though you said to Scala that you are going to use variables in this string, Scala doesn't know what in this string is a variable and what in this string is not a variable. So maybe total can be a variable, maybe stay can be a variable, maybe total lowercase can be a variable. And to remind you, total and total from capital and low, from lower case and from capital case are two different things when treated as variables. So you need to tell Scala what is a variable, what is not. And the way you do it is you write a dollar sign bef be before a variable. And this tells Scala that whatever follows the dollar sign is a variable. So if you run it, you see total stays 640. Now, if you remove the S letter here and rerun the program, it is going to say total stay dollar total. And the reason it's, it is going to say that way is because uh, we didn't tell Scala that we are going to use variables in this string. So it doesn't know, so it, it is not going to look for them. And if you put it here, if you put S here, it is going to know and it is going to look for it. And now the task, that you are tackling the task, the hard tasks that uh, we are discussing here is uh, uh, we want to not only to write total stay 640, we want to write $640 using the dollar symbol. So we want something like this. And uh, there is a problem here because dollar is treated by Scala in a special manner. So if you put a dollar here, well, it is used to, for, Scala uses it to find variables. And when it encounters dollar, it is going to look after the dollar for, uh, for a variable. It is not going to find it and it is going to complain. So if we run it, we see unclosed string interpolation. So, well, what is string interpolation? String interpolation is, uh, in this technique that uh, I have just showed, shown you, uh, when we use variables in a string. So when we use a variable in a string, using this S thing before the string, in Scala world, it is called, it is called the string interpolation. Uh, okay, Olga raised her hand, she has uh, a question, so I'll unmute you. So go ahead, Olga. So we just need to, to write double dollar sign that's all 
Yes, exactly. One dollar sign for uh, to tell that it will be like variable and then dollar sign. Mm -hmm. So can you explain to us uh, how you came to it? What was your reasoning? I don't know. <laughs> just, <laughs> just logic. Uh, just logic. So you just uh, need to experimented with it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the solution is correct. Uh, so nicely done. But logic doesn't always lead you to the correct solution. Uh, so maybe I can show you how, um, uh, like, what is uh, how how this kind of tasks are supposed to be solved. So uh, the task here is to essentially Google the answer, because as programmers, we very frequently we find ourselves in a situation where we do not know how to do something, and to find that something, uh, find how to do something. We need to Google for an answer. Now, first of all, it's a little bit of uh, my fault that um, you guys didn't find uh, the solution, many of you at least, because I didn't specify the task more precisely. So what sh I should have done here is to write that you need to Google it and you do not need, you cannot use string concatenation. Uh, you must use string interpolation. Uh, but I'll show you how to uh, how you should approach these tasks. So, um, so the idea is that um, when looking for solutions, it is very important to look for the simplest solutions possible. So, in programming, it is especially true because. Uh, Complicated solutions are very, very, very easy to come by. It is very easy to overcomplicate a solution to a problem. And whenever you overcomplicate a solution to a problem, complexity always, in all the cases, means bugs and means increased, increased uh, time to write the code. So if you ask me what is the main principle that I guide myself in everyday life when writing programs, it is simplicity, nothing else. That, that is, in my opinion, that's the main principle that, you, um, that um, brings you results. Now, in this situation, in the situation that uh, I showed you, it is important to find a simple solution. And uh, usually the way you find it, it is either from other people, using their advice and uh, or you Google. And Google gives you a solution. Now, what is in common about uh, asking for help a person and asking for help as a Google? Can anyone? Say in chat, uh, what do you think is common between those two approaches? Uh, the question was, Olga, what is the common between, uh, like, um, between two situations? So you ask another person for help, like your coworker, or you ask Google for help. You search for help in Google. Um, yes, asking a question. Uh, any any other ideas, uh, anyone? M maybe how you ask a question using what? So as John says, uh, the idea is you ask a question in both cases. And uh, the idea is that a question is asked using plain English.
So the idea is that to come by a solution to a programming problem, you need to ask the, the problem in plain English. You need to formulate the problem in plain English. And very often it is the case that you arrive to a solution to a problem when you formulate it very well in plain English. Now, one uh, good thing um, to, uh, to see whether or not you understood the problem well is to try to write it down and then read what you wrote. And if it makes sense to you, it means that uh, you understood your question well, you understood the, the questions that you're trying to ask well. And if it doesn't make sense to you, then chances are you didn't understand the question well. So if you cannot formulate it in plain English, you don't understand what you're trying to ask. And uh, in the machine learning community, in the artificial intelligence community, there is the same garbage in, garbage out. So And this means that uh, many people treat, for example, artificial intel intelligence as some magic black box that you give, for example, some data, and then it gives you the answers to all your questions about the data. Now, the idea is that if you give it garbage data, if the data doesn't make sense, doesn't contain any answers, then the artificial intelligence is not going to produce anything useful. Well, why I'm mentioning this here is because it is exactly the same thing about the process of asking questions, either a person or a Google. So if you, if you cannot formulate your question well in plain English, um, neither a person is going to give you a good advice, nor Google is going to give you a, a good advice. And chances are you're going to end up with a complicated solution, which is going to give you bugs later on. And bugs means increase in workload and less, uh, less productivity. So the question is, how exactly do you come by formulating a good question that you can ask Google? So here is a formula that I can give you. So Concepts plus culprit. So uh, the idea is, is that every problem that you encounter, it has some concepts that are involved in this problem. And if you have noticed, after every chapter, we have a concepts recap, which uh, recaps all of the concepts that were encountered in, uh, in this uh, chapter. So maybe I'll share the other a piece of screen. Uh, so after every chapter, we have the list of all the uh, concepts that were encountered in this chapter. Expression, expression evaluation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the culprit is uh, what uh, caused the problem with a particular concept. So before Googling, before asking a question to a person or to, to Google, it is a good idea to uh, figure out what uh, were the main concepts that had a problem because the problem it doesn't appear out of thin air it's always some concept that has a problem um, that has a problem with what you you have given to it so my question to you would be now uh, on on this line that i highlighted what are the what is the main concept that is um, uh, that is complaining that is causing the error because of which concept there is an error. And as a hint, I can say that the list of all the concepts that we have covered is uh, listed in the concept shortcut. Olga says string interpolation, and this is exactly right. So string interpolation is the main concept that uh, because of which the error happens. Why? Because uh, if we recap, we are using string interpolation here. Uh, that's in, that's what it is called, and what we are having here is uh, we are using a dollar sign, which is specific 
to the string interpolation, to this concept. You are using it in the way that string interpolation doesn't like, and it causes an error. Now, in our formula, it was uh, it was string it was um, concepts plus culprit, and by the culprit, I mean the thing that the concept is complaining about. So, what exactly the concept? Uh, what, what exactly we have given to our string interpolation concept is that it is complaining about. And close string interpolation, that's, uh, that's what uh, it says. But why exactly does this error happen in the concept of string interpolation? What did we give to the string interpolation to cause this error? I mean, it's a good strategy to just Google the Google the error message. It often works. It uh, there is a good chance that it will work. Just uh, copy and paste in this uh, string in Google, but in this case, unfortunately, it will not work because of uh, too much information to uh, unrelated information related to other bug. So yes, John is correctly saying in chat because there is an extra dollar a dollar without a variable. So uh, moving back to our formula, the concepts here we have determined are uh, string interpolation, and the culprit was the dollar. So what we are going to do now is we are going to go to Google. And then we are going to enter our formula here. So we are going to say, first we say Scala. And then we are going to say uh, the name of the concept that we are, uh, that we have determined, which is, and then according to our formula, we are going to say the culprit that it choked on, which is dollar. And then we're going to hit search. And the very first result brings us to the Stack Overflow, which is, by the way, the website where everyone asks questions about programming. So that's one avenue for you to search or to ask your own questions if you don't understand something. And then we look at the first answer that was accepted. It has a lot of votes. And then the solution is here. It says uh, put, uh, use $2, essentially. And then you can just use the solution here to solve the problem. So that's, uh, that's, how, that's a good formula to use whenever you do not uh, understand something. So um, another good formula to use is uh, So uh, like John said at the beginning, um, she said that uh, the, um, we should just Google the error message, which is unclosed string interpolation. And chances are that you can just copy and paste the error message in Google and it will give you answers. In this case, it's unfortunately, unfortunately not the case. It will give you not good answers, not usable answers. It will point you to a different bug. But if that doesn't work, so this you should try first, this you should try second. If, the, if Google and the error message doesn't work, what you should do is you identify what concepts you're working with, what is the main concept that is causing the error, without which the error is not possible. That's a good way to determine the root cause of an error is to remove concepts uh, and uh, try to use as little concepts as possible to reproduce an error and determine the concept without which the error is not possible. So you use, you Google the concept and then you uh, name somehow the culprit that is causing the error with that concept, in our case, a dollar. And this will give you, this is a good thing that will give you the response. How does the program do with the second dollar sign? 
So maybe asks uh, uh, how, uh, like uh, Mehdi and John both ask, it seems, about uh, about what exactly happens with Scala when you put uh, two dollar signs. Uh, and why does uh, two uh, dollar signs work? And the idea here is, um, uh, the idea goes back to the string interpolation. So, um, the double, double dollar sign sin is called an, it is a so-called escape. And this is a concept that is common to uh, many uh, many applications, many usages of strings. So sometimes in a string, sometimes in a text, uh, there are things with special meaning. Not only in Scala, not only with string interpolations, but uh, in general in programming, there are situations where you can give it uh, give the program text uh, that has things that have special meaning that are not quite text. In this case, we had uh, variables inside the text. And uh, usually you mark those things somehow. In our case, dollar is a marker. And the name is, uh, The name is variable. So the key thing is that um, there are text, there are pieces of text in programming where certain things, certain uh, characters, they have special meaning. And whenever you encounter this situation, you also encounter a question, how do you print? What do you do if you want to use to print this character that has a special meaning? How to print it? And uh, the act of printing something that has a special meaning in the context of a text is called escaping it. And it is a general uh, concept in programming in general. So print something that otherwise has a special meaning. And every language and every, uh, every technique it has, uh, it has their own way of printing it, of printing such things. And uh, it just so happens that in Scala it is $2. So why $2? Because, uh, because in uh, string interpolation, the escape concept is defined that way. So using our, uh, using our formula, we can even Google for how to, esca how to escape things in the string interpolation concept using our formula of uh, concepts and the culprit. If we, if, we know the, if we know the name of the escape scene, if you know that this is a scene, we could, we could Google that as well. So, if you go to Google back and say Scala string interpolation escape, uh, it will give it give us the same result, the same search result, because uh, so notice that we haven't Googled the culprit here. We have Googled the string interpolation one concept, and another concept is escape. So, but since we didn't know that escape is a sin, we just Googled the culprit, which is dollar. And it gave us the same thing. So both formulas work. So if you know that something is an escape, you can Google that directly. That's that's the point. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I think I didn't share the screen for you to demonstrate. So in Google, in Google, uh, we can Google for Scala string interpolation with escape, and it gives us the same result, escape a dollar sign. All right, so any more questions? Because we are already half an hour past our one hour time. 
So please raise your hand or write in chat if you have any, any other questions. So um, if uh, there are no more questions so far, uh, then um, the advice that I can give you on how to learn programming more effectively is uh, first is consistency. Do it um, regularly and you will be able to learn it. If you do it regularly, you will master it this time. Uh, next point that I would like to stress uh, when learning programming is that communication is very important. So there is Discord uh, of the Axiom School where you can ask questions about the course, where you can ask about um, code reviews. So any codes that you wrote, the homeworks that you're trying to solve, uh, you can put them on the code review to get the feedback of other learners. And the third thing is um, since uh, the book is still a work in progress and the school is still a work in progress, it is very important for me to receive your feedback to improve the content. So please, if you have, um, if you are struggling with any material, or if you have, um, if you see that something doesn't work or is suboptimal in the course materials, chances are it is not your fault. Chances are it is my fault because I didn't formulate the material in a way that works. So please let me know. Give your feedback. And um, moving forward. I am planning to uh, do those seminars um, every two weeks. Uh, no, not, not every two weeks, sorry, but every week. And uh, every week we are going to be covering some programming concept. Um, so far we are, going, uh, we are going through the book materials. So we are going to be covering a chapter per, uh, a chapter per um, seminar, but this might change in the future. We are going to experiment with the format a little bit. And also um, the time might not be optimal for all the people. So we might be able, might change the time in the future. Uh, about that, please also give me your feedback. So uh, that was it. So uh, thank you everyone for coming and uh, happy learning. Uh, let's stay in touch on Discord with each other and um, hope to see you during the next uh, seminar in one week. I'll announce that separately on Discord. So bye-bye have and have a great rest of the day.